and then shortly after that, 1980, my son John was born. As a matter of fact, March 9th, 1980, he was born. And then by the next year, February 13th of 1981, our first daughter Erica passed away. And whenever she passed away, I'll never forget because I, it was, like I said, it was on Friday the 13th in February, and the next day was Valentine's Day. And as we took her to that little grave site, and I stood out there, it was cold, stood out at the cemetery, and as we put that little casket down into the ground, I'll never forget it because I remember standing beside that casket because I would called everybody. Everybody that was teaching me faith and teaching me healing and all these things, I called everyone on the phone and couldn't reach one. And so I stood at that grave and I made a vow to God and I said, God, there was no man for me when I needed one. But if you will teach me, I will be that man for somebody else someday. And so that started me on the journey of really seeking after healing. And I began doing more study. By this time, I'd heard about this man. I'd heard about Smith Wigglesworth, and, and I heard about this man named John G. Lake, and I heard that he had trained people to heal the sick. And I thought, boy, you know, somebody, that, it's one thing to be able to do it. It's another thing to be able to teach it and pass it on to other people. And so I started trying to find out about this man, John G. Lake, about who, where was he and what was going on. And I eventually found his daughter and his son-in-law that was living up in uh, Washington State. So I began calling them on the telephone and talking with them and asking questions and every Monday I would call and I would ask you know 20, 15, 20 questions and then he would give me all the answers he had. I'd ask how Dr. Lake prayed, what he believed and what he teach, just different things and then after, uh, after he gave me the answers I would spend all week going into the Bible and verifying that the answers were biblical and the next Monday I had a whole new set of questions and so I'd start all over again and he started giving me names of people to talked to people that had worked with Dr. Lake that were still alive at that time. He gave me the name of some DHTs, Divine Healing Technicians, that Dr. Lake had trained. And it was at this time that uh, roughly in 81, going on up, we had a relationship up until 87. Gertrude passed away in 86, and then Wilford Wright, the son-in-law, passed away in 87. And just before he passed away, <clears throat> he started um, asking me questions about my testimony, what was going on, different things. And so I told him, and he wanted to know the date that I was hit by the car. And I thought, well, that's a strange request. So I had to go ask my mom, what, what date was that? And she said, well, that was September 16th of 1960. And as I went back and told him, he said, yeah, that's, that's what I figured. And he said, he showed me and actually told me the information about the prophecy, sent a letter, sent it all the information. I was reading it. And actually what the prophecy said was this. It says, talking about the person that would pick up the ministry, he said, he shall be born when this country has stopped growing. For I will bring him forth in the very last days. He shall consecrate himself to me even as he was consecrated as a child. Now, first off, it says he will be born when the country has stopped growing. Now, if you look at um, when the states, uh, obviously the country will never stop growing in population, so it wasn't referring to population. But if you look at when the last state was added to the Union, it was 1959. And 1959, of course, was when I was born. Then... Later on in the prophecy, and there's a lot to it actually, but the last part of it says this. The enemy will try to kill him a score and five years from the date of my death. <clears throat> Before his second score of years, he shall see all these things begin. Now, when it says that the enemy shall try to kill him a score and five years from his death, well, Dr. Lake died September 16th, 1935. Now, a score is 20 years, and a score in five years, obviously, is 25 years. So if you take September 16th, 1935, move forward 25 years, you come to September 16th, 1960, which was the date that I was hit by the car and the accident took place. So because of those two major events and because of the questions that I was asking Wolford, he said that was what confirmed that I was the person that he was supposed to pass this ministry on to. Even he and Gertrude used to say that they, they were not carrying Dr. Lake's ministry. They were merely holding it until they found who they were supposed to pass it to. So uh, when they did, they began passing me a lot of information, letters, uh, photographs, uh, names of other people that had worked with Dr. Lake. And so I started getting this information. And of course, as I said, he died, Wilford died in June of 87. And all this material was passed to me. Then in, for roughly almost 10 years actually, I just told the Lord, when I started getting all this, I said, God, this is good, but if I can't carry the ministry with the same spirit and the same power that Dr. Lake did, 
then it'll just die because I'm not going to build a memorial to a man and just talk about a man without being able to reproduce what he did. Uh, the, the, the glory is to God, not about a man. And so <clears throat> I said that and I kept studying healing and then we went down, my son and I went down to Alvin, Texas in 1995 to hear a little woman preach named Pauline Parham, who was Charles Parham's daughter-in-law. And while we were there, we decided to go over to Houston because I had some uh, names and addresses of people that had worked with Dr. Lake when Dr. Lake had a church in Houston back in 1927. And so as I went back and started looking for these people, usually when I find someone, they're usually in the graveyard, they're already dead. But this little woman, Mrs. Jeters, was in a nursing home in Houston. And I found her and started talking to her and just started asking her a bunch of questions. And finally she said, yeah, I could tell I was just wearing her out because she got kind of upset with me and just said, you know, all your questions would be answered if you just had the manual. And I said, well, yeah, but where am I going to find one of those? And she said, well, well I've got one. And, and, and I just thought, you know, okay, uh, what do I got to do to get it? And she just, because she knew Wilford and she knew my relationship with Wilford. And she said, well, you can see it, but you can't have it until I die. And so I always tell everybody it took me two years to pray her to death. I'm just joking. I don't pray people to death. But uh, it took two years later that she was in her late 90s or early 90s when I met her. And two years later, she died. And then that's whenever everything was passed to me in this manual that Dr. Lake had used to teach his divine healing technicians was passed to me. And the day I got it, I began reading and studying. This is at, uh, close to the end of 97. And I started reading it, and it changed everything. Everything I had learned about healing was wrong. Every, I mean, I don't know of anything I learned that was right. And I always tell people now, if you really want to do Bible healing, take everything you've been taught in the church and do the opposite. You'd actually be closer to what the Bible says about healing. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know of anything in particular, you know, that just is still standing. Because I started, the first thing I did was change the way I was praying. And as soon as I did that, our success rate in getting people healed shot up. And then over a period of nine months, all I did was pray for people in our home. We started going out and praying for people some, but we had people in our home every Friday night, Saturday night. People started coming at all hours of the night. And they would come in for nine months, every person that came to our home. I'm talking about 100%. Every person that came to our home for prayer was healed. Now, they weren't all healed instantly, but they were all healed within a matter of about two weeks max. That means they came out twice for prayer, and we ministered to them, started uh, changing how we prayed, as I said, and it just started growing from there. And then finally, we ended up, uh, actually, I got a call a couple of years later to actually go to Asheville, North Carolina, and to minister there to a family. And so the family flew me up, flew my daughter up with me. And when we got there, there were three houses there that had people in them that were waiting for me to come teach. And it wasn't at a church or anything. And I just, I'd wake up in the morning and start at one house and teach till noon and then take a break and walk to the next house. And we just did that for almost a week. During that time, we had 40 people there. There was over 200 people we prayed for that were healed that we know of. But there were 40 terminal cancer cases there. And we prayed for them that week and all 40 were healed that week, we got testimony. It took some time to find out about it, but all 40, we had a 100% success rate with cancer. Now, <clears throat> we came back home. Some of the people that were there were part of uh, Morningstar and Rick Joyner's uh, group up in, up in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. They called me to come down and do a, a teaching. And so we, actually my whole family moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we began teaching what we call the DHT, which was the material Dr. Lake had taught his divine healing technicians 70 years before. For 70 years, this material lay dormant. No one taught it. No one was out certifying divine healing technicians. Not one divine healing technician had been certified since Dr. Lake's death until we picked it back up and started recertifying them. Now, the ministry, as I said, was passed to us. I've got a lot of other materials. We've got the flag. If you've got the Copeland book on John Lake, his life and boldness and sermons, if you have that, you'll see a picture in there of Dr. Lake and his wife with two flags behind them. I have one of those flags. People that knew Dr. Lake were associated with him send me all kinds of materials. Um, there are other sermons that have never been published. We've got, uh, as I said last week, we've got a compilation of letters of Dr. Lake that had never been published. And we put them in the book called The, Wri the Writings of uh, John G. Lake's Writings from Africa is the way it's written. Uh, 